An introduction to ship construction for high school maritime students and OUPV and 100 ton students. The report was developed by John Beasley at Canada Point Maritime School. Copyright 2017 to 2018. The person who designs a ship is an engineer and a marine architect. The person who designs a ship has to have a lot of information before he or she begins the design process. Each ship is designed for a specific intended use. Ships are designed and built to different standards depending upon the ship's function and in if it will be used inland, coastal or in the open ocean. All ships are purpose-built for the job they have to do. This ship is designed to transport spent nuclear fuel. This ship is purpose-built to haul and deliver shipping containers. The first purpose-built container ship was the Gateway City, put in operation in 1957 by Malcolm McLean. Containers cut the cost of shipping by 25%. This is a design for a ferry boat or ferry ship. It hauls people, cars, trucks, railroad cars, and provides a number of services on board, such as movies, hotel rooms, gambling, day spas, and retail shops. Ferry ships are used in what is termed short sea shipping. This is the coastal trade between ports. These small ships are very common in Europe, but short sea ship is not well developed in the USA because they have to compete with interstate trucking and railroads. This ship design is an icebreaker, it is designed up right up on ice and break it allowing the boat to reach northern harbors in winter. The hull on these vessels is usually double thick and painted red. This is a design for a high-speed hydrofoil. These are more common in Europe for transporting commuters. In the USA they are used by the military for rapid deployment. This is a commercial fishing boat design. It looks a lot like a trawler. These small ships are built to withstand the open ocean. This is a cruise ship, originally based on ocean liner designs, and later modified warm port travel. The cruise ship industry saved the large ship manufacturing industry after the demise of the ocean liner industry in the 1960s. Ocean liners could not compete against jet airliners. Ships construction is like building construction. Some buildings are designed to be big open spaces like theaters and convention centers. Some buildings are designed with a number of small rooms like hotels and office buildings. Ship construction is just as individual as all the buildings you see every day driving to work or school. The marine architect has to choose a variety of construction techniques to solve the problems that his ship will face. There are two major types of framing when designing ships transverse framing and longitudinal framing. Transverse framing has large open interior spaces. It is ideal for loading vehicles. Ships that haul vehicles are referred to as row-row ships or roll-on roll-off. Transverse framing is also ideal for shipping brake bulk items such as sand, concrete, rice, grain, iron ore, scrap steel, aluminum gravel, and sugar. A roll-on roll-off ship is built using transverse framing to create large open spaces. The large arrow on the ship construction diagram shows a ship design with oversized closely spaced transverse framing. Here is a sectional diagram of a ship being designed with transverse framing. An example of a transverse framing design is the cadet training ship, Empire State. The Empire State is used by SUNY Maritime College, it is sometimes used by Kings Point Maritime College and Mass Maritime. The ship's home port is New York Maritime College which is located in the Bronx, New York City. The Empire State began its career as a freighter in the United States line. Longitudinal framing is another design option. Longitudinal framing uses less transverse framing along the sides of the ship but uses more compartment walls called bulkheads. The bulkheads provide a lot of the strength in holding the ship together. 
On a longitudinal framed ship the transverse framing is referred to as stringers. Longitudinal framing is good for carrying liquid cargoes. The walls in a ship are called bulkheads. In a tanker ship the bulkheads that divide up the ship have holes cut into them. The bulkheads are used as baffles to reduce the liquid's ability to splash around in the ship's hold. Liquid splashing around in a ship is called free surface effect. Free surface effect can be dangerous to ship stability. This subject is covered in Canada Point Maritime School's OUPV Ship Stability video. Free surface effect can be caused by a liquid or anything that acts like a liquid, such as people on a deck, fish in a hold, cargo that is able to shift in the hold. The fuel used on large ships is called bunkers or bunker fuel, rather than being called diesel fuel. There are grades of bunker fuel. The bunkers used can be heavy fuel oil, HFO, out at sea, and light gas oil required to be burned in port. Some nations require the burning of low sulfur fuel oil, ELS, FO, to protect the environment. This is a diagram of baffles in a liquid tanker ship. The objective is to minimize free surface effect and provide structural integrity to the ship. This ship is longitudinal framing and is a bilge keeler. The bilge keel can be used to hold drinking water or ballast water. The bilge keel provides better ship stability and a margin of safety in the event the ship gets a breach at the water line. To review, walls are called bulkheads on a ship. Free surface effect is when a liquid, or something that moves as a liquid when thrown around in a vessel by waves and sea actions. To avoid free surface effect a tank must be 97% full or completely empty. Examples of free surface effect, fish in a hold, people on the top deck of a party boat, fuel, water tanks. Free surface effect can cause neutral stability or negative stability. This is the fundamental design stability equation for a ship or boat. The architect uses this basic equation to design a boat that is seaworthy over the range of sea conditions the vessel is expected to encounter. M equals meta center is the point of intersection between a vertical line through the center of buoyancy of a floating body such as a ship and a vertical line through the new center of buoyancy when the body is tilted, which must be above the center of gravity to ensure stability. G equals center of gravity is the point in a boat where the gravitational forces are pulling downward. B equals center of buoyancy all forces in the pushing the vessel up. GZ equals riding arm or reserve buoyancy that tries to move the boat upright back to stability. Nearly every nation has a classification society. The classification society will work with the architect to design and build a vessel that is class compliant. The Coast Guard works with the designer on small craft to get them inspected. A classification society will work with larger ships to ensure the design and equipment used on the ship are up to class standards. The Coast Guard and Classification Society tell the ship architect what must be accomplished for the vessel to be class compliant. The design partnership between the ship architect and Coast Guard or Classification Society is largely descriptive rather than prescriptive. This is a list of some of the classification societies that help architects design vessels and help ship owners properly maintain vessels. Lloyd's Register, American Bureau of Shipping, Bureau Veritas, Det Norske Veritas, Registro Italiano Navali, Nkani Ponkaiji Kukai, Germanischer Lloyd, Russian Maritime Register of Shipping, China Classification Society, Turkish Register of Shipping. Ships are put in classes or categories that tell the insurers, charters, and future buyers of these vessels the intended use these ships were designed for. The classification certificate is good for 5 years. After 2.5 years the bottom is cleaned and inspected. Every 5 years the ship must be surveyed to show that the hull and equipment still meet the standards for that class of vessel.
A ship that does not carry a current approval certificate from a classification society or from the U.S. Coast Guard on smaller vessels is not allowed to operate and cannot buy insurance. If you cannot buy insurance no one is going to use your vessel. You can't even bring the vessel into some ports without showing proof of insurance. One of the safety features an architect designs into a vessel is the load line. The load line is also called a plimsoll mark. The plimsoll mark is the safe loading limit of the vessel. Samuel Plimsoll, when Prime Minister of England designed a safe water mark, a mark that defined minimum freeboard or maximum draft a vessel could assume. The marking to the right of the load line is the adjustment line ranging from cold winter salt water at the bottom and warm tropical fresh water at the top. This is the adjusted load line for those categories of water. The water line defines the draft of the vessel or how much water the vessel is drawing. The draft of the vessel will change with the density of the water. As the amount of cargo on board changes, or as fuel or fresh water is added or consumed. We will now define common parts of a ship. The hull is the watertight steel outer plating of the vessel. The hull is made of sheets of steel. The long side of the sheet of steel is called the seam and the end of the plate is called the butt. These metal sheets are similar to 4 foot by 8 foot sheets of plywood used in building construction. Smaller boats can be made of aluminum, fiberglass reinforced plastic or wood. The rudder is used to steer the ship's direction. It is a blade that must be large enough to control the ship. The rudder is under the vessel. The ship must have way on about three knots for the rudder to work. A bow thruster or stern thruster works to move the bow of the vessel sideways that is laterally at slow speeds of less than three to five knots. The forecastle is the working area of the bow used in docking and anchoring the vessel. The main deck is the first continuous deck that is open to the weather. The hold is a large empty area in the vessel used to store cargo and ship supplies. Between decks, the middle decks, between the upper decks and the hull or bilge. The superstructure is the area above the main deck. It houses the bridge and often the officers' sleeping quarters. Backup generators and battery supply to operate the ship's electrical equipment and GM DSS emergency equipment may also be located in the superstructure. The bridge is the command center of the vessel, serving as the helm station and navigation station. It is where the ECDIS electronic charting data information system is located. The starboard side of the vessel is the right side of the vessel. It has a green navigational light. The port side of the vessel is the left side of the vessel. It has a red navigational light. Lights and day shapes are defined in the nautical rules of the road. Primary navigation lights. The masthead has an arch of 225 degrees. The port light has an arch of 112.5 degrees. Starboard light has an arch of 112.5 degrees. The stern light has an arch of 135 degrees. Ship lighting configurations as defined by the nautical rules of the road. These lights must be designed for each type of vessel. These lights must be designed onto each type of ship. The large blue arrows point to features of a ship's hull that must be learned for the OUPV exam. Stringers. Camber. Tumblehome. Seams and butt ends. Pillars. Turn of the bilge. Copyright 2017 to 2018. John Beasley, Kennedy Point Maritime School.